My name is Phyllis Y. Whitley. If you have been spiritually victimized and traumatized, welcome to Spiritology Live, where I bring my number one Amazon best-selling author book to life. Each episode will be a spiritual, metaphysical, holistic space of consciousness, where you will learn to break your religious shackles within and live in your promised land today. Let's go. Well, 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 well. We talked about something that was so good in part one, how to prune your rebellious seeds of yesterday, that I'm going to go ahead and continue. Okay? I'm going to continue to make sure that you got it right and you got it tight so you can go forth and get your promised land. Yes? Okay. Let's dive into it. Now, last time I read the scripture, because I was just letting you know about the scripture, Isaiah 14, 12, that was talking about weakening the nation. And I, to recap, that particular scripture, go to it, Isaiah 14, 12. Basically, how you are falling from heaven, O Lucifer, son of the morning, how you are cut down to the ground, you who weaken the nations. It's talking about you, the head of the household, Lucifer, a seed of rebellious. If you don't know where it started, Go pick up the manuscript, okay? Don't rely on your spiritual leader to just tell you. Just go forth and listen to the scriptures, write them down, and then go look at look it up yourself. Y'all don't even know what the... I mean, God knows spiritual leader could be reading something from a, a Kool-Aid box, a cereal box, and y'all don't even know. Y'all just think, well, my presence in the church, you know, I'm, I'm all right. He's covering me. No, who are you covering when you go home? I got to remind y'all, none of my episodes is to bash spiritual leaders. If you got a good spiritual leader that's good, clap your hands, be happy. But I'm here to reveal the lies for you to wake up and say, hey, wait a minute, wait a minute. What am I doing? What am I doing? You know, those of you who know me know that I have relatives who's actually in education and one of somebody's close to me is a teacher. And unfortunately, is frustrated from what I'm hearing from teachers. And I used to be a substitute teacher where the parents take the kids with all of this baggage and it's like they give them to the teacher and say, huh, now could you fix them? Don't you know God gave us a gift within? And you know what that is? To go forth and multiply, to increase your seed. That's what we're talking about. That's what my book is about. So You know, those of you who haven't gotten it by now, shame on you. With that being said, we was talking about how that rebellious seed is in the systems. It's in communities. It's in groups. And it keeps you from moving forth because it goes through your ear gate. Their mission is to go through your ear gate, your eye gate, all the gates that you have to weaken you. We talked about sports. That seed is not only showing you We have a particular culture that's playing the game, entertainment, and we want them to stay there, but we don't want them to prosper. What do you need to do in sports? Get your own platform. Some of y'all should go ahead and buy your own team. The purpose of you being blessed on a high platform is not for you to eat the ground of your land. It's for you to share it. Hello? If you're not satisfied, go get your own team. We talked about Hollywood. Get your own award show. I'm talking about different cultures. Hollywood, you know, is very frustrating throughout the decades and centuries. They literally put what they feel, this is what we think is the most beautiful. This is what we think is the most handsome. But there's a lot of people in Hollywood that have made it and they got a high platform and they don't do a goddamn thing for nobody that's coming behind them. Go buy your own magazine. You become your own Academy Award. Hello? And some of y'all have done it. I'm just letting you know the solution behind it. How about in politics? You can't just vote for the president because the president is not the head of your household. You got to go ahead and look into voting for congressmen, different ones that's representing your state, your city. And you still can't expect them to come and run your household. But you can try your best to make sure the one who is not showing their rebellious seeds is appointed. And you notice I said hi. 
Because you're not going to get nobody out there perfect. That's why you better know the supreme source of the sources. Oh, I'm so tired of you going back to the Bible. But what should I go to? Did you write a book? Do you have a book? Hello? What are you suppose I supposed to do? It's called wisdom. The book of Proverbs telling you everything you need to know is in that manuscript. Go ahead and I dare you to go read Proverbs and to talk about everything, to, about everybody. And you'd be like, oh my goodness. Really? It's called the good news gospel. I am here to teach you. what well, that's what we're talking about right now. Your ear gates and your eye gates, you got to be very, very careful because those are the tools that generational curses have came down because it's what? You teach it to your kids. I don't understand that. Well, let me break it down to you. It's just like going to the doctor. You know, people say, everybody's in my family got diabetes. I can't help but have it. Let me tell you. When I was a certain age, they kept telling me, you know what, diabetic, your so-and-so's a diabetic and your who a diabetic. Well, you know you can get diabetes. And I looked at them and said, really? I never knew that. Because you know what they say, how do you bring general curses down? The behavior pattern, the same words, the same belief. Number one, you eat the same food that your parents eat. So if they got diabetes or illness, most likely you're going to get it. Hello, how about the things they listened to, the things they didn't listen to? Did they pick up a book and read it? Was everything they was telling you about was pure gossip through the community? That went in your ear gate. You teach your kids and you that's how you bring those generational curses. It was once upon a time, you got that slavery mentality. You go take it and you bring it to your kids. If you don't like somebody because of the color of their book, your kids are going to hear it. Your kids are going to tell you, you know, hear you talk about somebody. They're going to hear you tease somebody. And you know what? And I just finished a book dealing with bullying called Axe Jalen. Go find it on Amazon. With that being said, bullying, I didn't even know it was that serious. And two, I was, I mean, I actually did some substitute teaching, but also I have um, someone close to me who is a teacher. With that being said, that bullying seed, do you think kids just wake up and say, you know, I just want to go to school and whoop somebody behind? They hear it from their parents. Go to a sports event with the kids. I remember years ago, they were just showing it. I don't even look at it on the news. And they were just showing how the parents, when the kids was losing, the parents got up and they were fussing and cursing. That is That seed traveled. We talked about Lucifer in the scripture, weakened the nation. First of all, your house will have to be weakened. Yes, stuff came down from those generational slavery, all the stuff that certain cultures went through. And you, as the head of the household, job is to teach them. Teach them. You don't need to listen to that seed. You have to prune that seed out of yourself, prune it out of your kids. So you understand? Yeah, you need to take a deep breath. It is not the teacher job to teach everything to your kid. You should put and install some values in your kids. So when they go to school, they not running rapid. They ain't beating everybody up. I'm telling you, it's coming from the parents or it's coming from the neighborhood. Be careful. Well, you know what, Miss P, I can't do anything about it. I'm born in the ghetto. I was in the ghetto. You have no excuse. If anything, you should you should be running to your promised land. You need to believe in the good reports versus the bad reports. The stuff, we talked about how pharmaceutical medicine is on every commercial. I don't want to hear that mess. I'm mute. I don't want to hear that. Why do I want to hear about, well, my toe, my big toe is hurting and you know it's a medicine for that? And it's almost like, you know, because everybody want to follow the crowd. Well, you know, the crowd is going to get their medication for their big toe, but I'm going to let you know, you hear, you know, the choir voice. But this will side effects will take off the rest of your toes. So if you experience the other toe falling off, you know what you need to do and stop using the medication or contact the doctor. And, and then, you know, I'm not laughing, but I'm just telling you, I'm telling you, it's a medication for everything. But you know what? That's the bad report. God said, go preach the gospel. He didn't say get in a pulpit. Preach the gospel. That means you get out there and the words that come out your mouth should be a good report. 
Well, what am I supposed to do? What am I supposed well, you supposed to learn it? Meditation, affirmation, prayer. All of this is putting you in an environment, in a spiritual stage, the spiritual atmosphere of the truth of what it is that you want to be and do. When you see bullying, when you see all this stuff happening, even in sports, because there's a lawsuit going on, even in lawsuits around the country, even in wars. Well, how was this? I think I spoke on something about manifestation, the battlefield. Yes, the war start within. You were going to go and curse somebody out. That thing was rehearsed in your mind. You know how so-and-so say, well, you know so-and-so said this to you and you got it. You stand up there and you say, I'm going to curse them out. I'm going to do this to them. And then sure enough, you you rehearse it and you get more mad and more angry. And when you see that person, you manifest a fight. That's how war comes out. So-and-so leader said this to this. So-and-so leader said this and this. And I'm going to go do it. And they're not going to. The leaders don't kick butts. The leaders go and send other people to get out there on the ground. That's how it's manifestation. That's why the bad reports, the seed came from generations. You got to cut and prune that seed from coming to your next generation. How do you do it? Control what goes in their air. Okay, well, they are a teenager now. I have nothing to do with it. No, you do what you need to do because it says the Bible says you bring them up in the way they should go. They will not depart. I'm telling you, if they do swing all the way over, they will remember. You will never forget. Because they will be looking for peace. And when they get in the world and the world is showing them everything, they remember peace. Got to teach them something. You don't just send them out. You just send them out and say, oh, you just, just believe in anything and everybody. You don't, life don't work like that. They need to see your home at peace. They need to see, no, your house is not going to be perfect. So when those seeds come knocking at your door, they need to know, well, what do you do to overcome your obstacles? You prune the seeds. It's seasons where I went through stuff. And you know what I did? I had to go run and do what? Meditation, affirmation. You know what that? That's prayer. They don't teach you that in the church. Prayer ain't just saying, well, our father who art in heaven. Because if you look at it, he said, you shall not want. But yet we walk around the church and we want and we want and we crying. No, you need to do some affirmation on the gospel, the good news, the truth of you. Well, give me an example. Well, first of all, I am beautiful. I am intelligent. I am smart. I am anything and everything that I desire to be that is good. I am walking in my destiny. I am love. I am peace. Amen. Do you understand what I'm saying? I bring everything together. My meditation, my affirmation, and my prayer all in one. Do you understand? I even have a prayer team that we pray morning, noon, and night because you need to have your house covered. And you know the thing about it, you know, I I speak from a Christian base, but I have been in other religion or learned other religion. And one thing I can say, they know how to meditate. And the good news is that people are realizing, even Christians, that you literally need to meditate. Churches have shocked me because now it was a time when they had a preacher that used to talk about the meditation and we won't say his name. And they call him everything. Oh, that's spooky. That's not spiritual. You see, the problem with church people, they are scared of spirituality. They are scared of the spiritual realm. That's why psychics are out there making, it's a multi-billion dollar industry because they are just tapping into their inner spirit. And some of them playing with outer stuff and making that the power. But see, when you get my book, you'll realize the power is within you. So whatever you touch, is going to be powerful. Yes, you can take a nickel and say, oh, my God, this nickel and give it to five people said this nickel bless me. And guess what? Most likely those four out of five will come and say, you know what? That nickel bless me too. give me some more nickels. And then you put your belief like the Israelites on what was outside. The nickel didn't bless you. It was your word that bless you, your belief that bless you. Take all of that and preach the gospel, the good truth of you. When you get your promised land, I know you, y'all said, well, you know, that's all she talked about, the promised land, the promised land. Well, what is the promised land? The promised land is whatever your heart desire. And I say that's good because your heart desire can be to murder somebody, to kill somebody. Your heart desire can be, I want my neighbor, I want my neighbor husband. I said good desire. 
But Miss P, that that can be a good design. She ain't treating him right. I mean, I want him to come to me. And guess what? If he come to you doing that union, when she leave, he going to do the same thing to you that he did to her. It's going to be another woman that's going to be just like you and going to say he need to come to me. Vice versa. I'm not knocking any of that. I'm just trying to tell you. I'm making it plain. I know how it is to sit there and be told, even to this day, you know, in certain cultures, you and I'm speaking as a black woman, you wake up and then you hear your parents discussing it. You hear your family discussing, you know, you're not supposed to be so and so. Then you go to school and your teacher, I remember writing, doing book reports, teaching, and then you know you can't have that. You know you can't do that. It is some of the greatest people out here today will tell you, I'm not bashing teachers, but I'm trying to tell you that seed will go anywhere and speak to you. It can be your neighbor. We discussed this in my other episode. Please go back and listen. It can be your teacher. It can be your neighbor. It can be a stranger in the store looking at you upside down because they don't like the way your hair look. That's a seed. And you need to prune the seed. How? Meditation, affirmation, prayer. It's so many things you can do. You need to have the environment in your home so you are able to create the things that you was here made to create. When you get your promised land, it is never just for you. It's for you to go show other people how to get their promised land. How do you do it? It's your creativity. What do you do? Do you like to cook? YouTube is waiting for you. Do you like to build cars or you like the mechanical part of cars? Go specialize in it. Do you like science? And they told you you can't go into science because your book is not the right color. Bust the door down. Do you understand? If you don't like, well, I don't like the police department. I don't like what they're doing to our culture. Well, go and become a cop. Get on the board. Better yet, go and study law. Do you understand? The promised land ain't just putting a sign in your hand and saying, I'm going to so-and-so-and-so. And And most of the people that's setting up out there, okay, that's good. But most of the people out there just say, well, you know, I'm just going to follow the crowd. I don't even know what this is for. And I'm just going to stand up here. And sometimes it breaks up into war, manifested anger. The rebellious seed will bring and manifest the bad things. Remember, if you go and you take your ground or you take a flower pot and you put in the wrong seeds, you're going to get nothing but weed because it's going to go choke. You must have better seeds, more good seeds than bad seeds so that the good seeds can turn around and they can prosper. But you have to go behind the growth of your seed and you have to prune the weeds that's growing. And you have to do it to your family. You have to do it to your family. And you have to be careful because your outside family can come right into your home family and put, let me tell you, the worst seeds, rebellious seeds is coming from people closest to you. And it doesn't stop. So when you teach your kids and they'll go out there and learn and they are not following everybody, they're not looking at commercials and movies and saying, oh my God, they say that's beautiful. They say that's handsome. Let me go get a man that look like that. Oh, my goodness. Oh, oh, well, you know, I have to have diabetes because my mother and my grandmother. And no, 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 no. The last time I went to the doctor, the doctor said, at your age, you are no medication. I live a holistic life. Well, what do you know, Miss P, about being sick or whatever? I know about being sick because I had I said it in my first episode, deadliest disease. Well, <laughs> it really was. I had got cancer. I am a cancer conqueror. And people say, are you um in remission? I don't use anything with re, we, 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 R, E, replay. Because it gives you the illusion that you can re, go back again. I'm not going back again. But when you go through something and you say, well, how do I stop this? I love the way my mama cook. I love this. I love my pork. I love this. How do I prune that? You got to get around the right people. You got to listen to the people who is in that area where you want to go. You got to specialize in something to get your promised land. And I'm telling you, everybody's not college material. It is so many things that you can do, but it's in my book. I can't give you all the dessert. I know y'all want me to give you everything on here, but I'm going to tell you something. You are in control. You go get your promised land. Don't let anybody stop you because do you understand 
It is a seed out there that's multiplied in so many people, especially around us, especially the people that's closest to us. If they don't celebrate you, you better run. I always say, hand it over the long silver spoon. Because let me tell you, as you get blessed in that promised land, they ain't going to want to be around you. They're going to come around you and some of them will just, just throw that seed and throw it. You know why? Did you ever think it's because they are jealous? They are envious because you're doing something that they just too lazy, got daggone lazy to go forth and do. I had someone actually supposed to be close to me and they said, um, why are you making all these books? You know what? I don't curse people out. I bless them out. But at that moment, I said, is it worth me saying something to this person? Because I'm thinking, why not? And I did say to them, because that's what I do. That's what I do. See, your book is going to be one of your legacies because your book will go way ahead of you. Why do you think people are still listening to Napoleon Hill's book? All the mystics books are still number one and, and very popular. Your books will go on each generation and long gone. Even if it's a digital book, that's another one of those ways that you can literally go ahead and do that. I do teach, you know, I'm a consultant and I teach little classes on that. So, you know, you can find me. I don't know when I'm going to teach a class on that, how to make, how to literally make generational wealth. So you can't make generational wealth without knowing where you come from and then pruning those seeds of yesterday so you can correct today for a better tomorrow. I'm out. Now, one thing I want to say, I went overboard. Yes, I did. But thank you for coming into my space. Now, go get your promised land. Please don't forget to share and review on all your social media platforms because I don't know who you know. And see, we got to come together and we got to spread this good news so other people can know how to get their promised land. But guess what? Your obstacles, we have to prune them. You want more dessert? Please go on Amazon and you can find my books. You can find my t-shirts. I don't think I mentioned my brand is called Phyllis's Whisper. And also what's new? I just did a book called Ask Jalen about an artistic teenager who literally is giving advice to the unique. Remember, we need to stop that bullying scene and we can do it all together. Thank you.